Welcome back, Necromaniacs. Now we need to cover the Brutes. But first, we did miss one of the hangers-on that I do want to cover because there's a miniature for them. And you would think that because there's a miniature for them that they would make them decent, at least. But for 50 credits, you can get Bigby Crumb, a Rattling Slopper. And unfortunately, he has a stub gun. He's got a slop pot ladle, which counts as a club. He's got uh, weapon skill five, so he's not gonna be great with that club. And he's got ballistic skill four, so he can use his stub gun, uh, but he's gonna be tied down to his slop pot, by the way. Strength two, toughness two, one wound, uh, initiative of two plus, and one attack in uh, hand to hand combat. Moves four inches also, so he's gonna be dragging around the slop pot. Moves four inches, because he's tiny, I get it. And he's 50 credits, so at least he's cheap, question mark. He's got Lilo for a skill, which is like not a real skill. Um, and let's look at his special rules, because maybe possibly they made them good, you know? It's a special character, cool mini. Let's see what cool stuff he can do. He can do a basic action called add ingredients. So when he does this, uh, they get to... Uh, Pick one of these and until the end of the round, that's kind of the key part of this, is until the end of the round, this takes effect, uh, usually for fighters within two inches. So he can do the Stinger Spore Stew until the end of the round, friendly fighters are with, that are within two inches of the slot pot, so they got to be right next to it, uh, count as having assist when making recovery tests. So if they're dying uh, then and possibly bleeding out, then they get an assist. So it's kind of like he's a medic if he uses that for that one round. Next is the Friends on Fondue. Until the next round, friendly fighters within two inches of the slot pot gain Nerves of Steel and True Grit. Those are two of the best skills in the game. Those are great skills. Problem is you've got to be within two inches of this slot pot to give it to somebody. I don't I don't get it. Um, I, it's It frustrates me. Um, and then next is the tentacle surprise. Until the start of Big B's next activation, Slop Pot counts as a beast layer. Note that Big, uh, Big B doesn't trigger the beast. So this is kind of a six inch area. If you've, if you've, ne if you've never run into the beast layer, a six inch area, the beast gets one attack, hits on a four plus, it hits hard. I want to say it's strength six and does like three wounds. So if it hits you on that four plus, it's going to be bad. But if, if you have a person with... Uh, dodge or uh, step aside or any of those skills that let you say like, oh, if I make an initiative test, which I have initiative two plus, I ignore that one attack, then it's not going to matter. Um, so I don't love that one either um, because it's tied to where the slot pot is and it, it's, you're just kind of stuck. And yes, it makes a six, six inch kind of zone around you, but even that isn't, isn't amazing. That's, that's just a little bit bigger than a blast template. So a large blast template. So then he's a regular slopper, so he gets the slopper rules, which I already gave one star in my review for uh, for uh, hangers on, and he's also part of the crew, so he, uh, you know, is treated kind of like a, a person on the gang roster, etc. So <sighs> instead of one star, I'll give him two stars. That's what that's as good as I can get. Now, if only. If only there was a rattling slopper in some other game that they could take precedence and use to, to do this. Oh, wait, there is a game. It's called Blood Bowl that they pretty much stole all the rules for this game and, and used to make Necromunda, except for there's no pitch. I don't understand why they didn't go back and look at a Halfling Master Chef. So a Halfling Master Chef in the game of Blood Bowl at the start of a game and at the halftime, you get to roll 3d6. And any of those that roll a 4+, plus, you get a re-roll um, for the game. Now, I know you don't get re-rolls in, uh, in ne Necromunda, really. But what you could say is, and here's what I would do, is that here's two examples of if you took this Halfling Master Chef rule and twisted it just a little bit, and also the price is $100,000, which is, it's about 100 credits is what I would say. It's as if, if you made the Rattling Chef 100 credits, gave him either of these two powers, I would say, awesome, this guy's good, at a minimum three stars, just because of his special abilities. Here's number one. Just These are just off my brain while staring at the Halfling Master Chef stuff. Um, here's option number one. Every fighter that you get to bring to the battle gets to roll a 
d6. And on a six, which you know I hate that, but I don't want to make this too good, on a six, that player gets a reroll that they can use for a shoot basic action or a fight basic action. Okay, you know, so it's somewhat limited, I guess, is what, the, what I'm trying to do here. Um, and they carry, just give them a token or something that's like a reroll token, and they just keep that on their card or by their by their fighter miniature. And then during the game, they're gonna they the food was so good that they just get this random reroll. So I've added a reroll into the game because that's what it does in Blood Bowl. The second option, roll two d six for every four plus, you get an extra uh, tactic card, and also because you're using him, um, the enemy, if they have any tactics cards, we, we really don't use them unless it's for, uh, as a balancing measure, they lose one. So there you go. The, you, you, you gain possibly two cards. They lo automatically lose one because you, you have this rattling chef. Um, that you've paid 100 credits for, and he's back at home making amazing uh, food. I personally like giving the rerolls out better, um, but that's something else you could do. You could use this with almost everything. You could do rerolls. You could do um, maybe on a, a roll for every single guy who of yours who's going in the battle, and maybe on a six they get plus one toughness for that battle or something like that, or maybe plus one wound for that battle would be cool. Um, I, this could be good. And, and again, play test it, try it out. There's a cool mini for it. Make something. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know why they haven't tried. Um, but that's my suggestions. If you want to play around with those, I'll try and do it too. Cause I'm probably going to get the miniature, um, because it looks good and he doesn't need to be a good fighter. He, he just sets in the backfield and he gave you this awesome ability, um, and hopefully if they attack your base or whatever, or force you to attack on your own gr or to do a fight on your own ground, they can go after him and get rid of that son of a gun because he's been giving you such a good buff the whole time uh, that he's a target. So, but otherwise, if, if they brought this to a battle, I would ignore him because he's useless. And I definitely wouldn't go within six inches of him because he's going to turn it into uh, the the monster and try and hit me with it. So I don't get it. Well, I don't know why they make cool miniatures and then just really half-ass it when it comes to making the rules especially when the rules are already there guys that this is a this is a slam dunk just steal the rules from blood bowl tweak it a little bit so it fits the game and uh, keep going okay that's my rant about this we're moving on all right first brute up to bat is the cador stig shambler now i love this guy i love the miniature that i have i'll show put that up on the screen here for you um he's 240 credits that's an average price you'll see uh, as we go through these guys um, for for a guy. He's got Strength 5, which is good. Toughness 4 uh, is kind of the standard, so not horrible. His wounds are 4, which is good. Uh, most of them have 3, kind of average. His attacks are only 2, but really, I wouldn't use this guy for as a, as a close combat guy unless you had to. Um, I'm going to use him more as a weapon weapons platform, and here's why. Um, let's jump down to the special rules and look at that. And there's kind of a clue down here of the, to how I think you should use them. Um, so he gets intelligent control. The fighter may immediately reroll any failed leadership, cool willpower, and intelligence checks uh, for this guy. Okay, great. That's nice. Move and shoot. This one's good. This fighter can move uh, or can, may fire an unwieldy weapon as a basic action rather than a double action. Um, but although doing so confers a minus one to the hit modifier. So you can still do things uh, and shoot at minus one. So you're going to be shooting on fives. Um, so there's pros and cons there. Hopefully you get them in place, set them up in the middle of the board or something like that, and then just start blazing away. Um, here's the, here's the, the, the hint. Twin linked heavy stubber special rule. Well, that's weird that they have a specific special rule for a, a weapon. Maybe you should get that weapon. When the fighter makes a ranged attack, they may reroll any number of ammo dice rolled. However, they must accept the result of the reroll even if it's worse. Um, yes, I love rapid fire, especially for the twin linked heavy stubber. Rapid fire three, hell yes. Um, it's unwieldy. Okay, that's fine. Does damage to uh, 20 inch uh, short range. 
40 inch long range it can shoot all the way across almost any board i doubt you would see 40 inches a lot of the time um it's minus one at that so again stay within 20 inches you'll be fine um just ruck up and shoot and then strength four awesome yes ap1 thanks might as well um so and then four plus ammo not bad ammo for for a heavy weapon so get this weapon it's uh 40 credits so that's gonna make him 240 plus 40 is 80 and then might as well give him the flak armor for 10 credits and uh that way he's what 290 total there not horrible again you'll see so there's some other guys that get in there i'll give you four stars for this guy four stars ignore the heavy flamer um i wouldn't give him the pole arm really i would just keep him with the club um uh i don't know i like it i i guess for miniature reasons i would stick with the club just because he looks better with the club for me but uh, if you want to go the pole arm it's not horrible whatever four stars still either way i like them great weapons platform uh definitely gonna grab one of these and paint them up uh, i got mine on order coming soon all right the deluxe spiker i bet they might be good let's see 190 credits so the cheapest brute out there moves six inches okay that's pretty good he's pretty fast wounds four okay it doesn't look like he's a fighter he's got weapon skill six ballistic skill six that can't be good no way you'll you'll see why that doesn't matter um coming up he's got he's unarmed okay so he doesn't have any weapons he even when he's engaged he can use his fist but he usually relies on psychic powers correct um, and here's why he's got psychic scream that affects stuff within three inches he's got force blast affects things within three inches if you want to engage this guy a you're gonna have to work through all of his four wounds and then he's gonna jack you up with some psychic powers uh, if you get that close he has the unsanctioned psycho ability or I guess as a skill um, which makes him that's kind of negative things um, and also here's the, my favorite thing is the displacer field this is armor that gives you a four plus um, if you roll that four plus, whatever the strength is of the weapon that just hits you, you go in a random direction that way. Now, how they describe this is like, oh, you, this is going to suck. You're going to uh, go flying off into space. And if you go off the board, you, I guess that's the only way you might lose this guy because of this is if he leaves the, the battlefield somehow. Um, but otherwise, if you're up on a tower or something and, and it's like, oh, be careful because you'll go flying off the tower. Well, let's go down to his special rules. Flight. A spiker ignores all terrain, may move freely between levels without restriction, and can never fall. So he doesn't care if he gets blasted out in the middle of space. He's just going to float down like a butterfly and land uh, on the ground, not hurt at all. So again, this displacer field, not a problem. Doesn't matter if you're up on a balcony or something like that. They can't, you know, they can't bounce you off with a lucky shot. Um, and it's on a four plus. So he has a four plus armor save and it might bounce him somewhere random, which I guess could get him charged maybe if you get an unlucky random roll. Um, but I'll take that. Uh, 50 credits, totally worth it. He's already the, the cheapest uh, brood out there. So slap that 50 credits on him and give him the displacer field, it's worth it to keep him alive. And also he's got four wounds. So a lot of wounds, great armor save, awesome. Now let's get into his best power, the Psychic Assault. If you wanna go back and look at my weird powers, uh, I talk all about this. This is one of the best psychic powers in the game. Oh, I totally forgot. His willpower. Willpower of a 4 plus on 2d6. So he's got the best willpower of any of the psychers. And so he's going to be uh, exploding enemies' brains all over the place. I want to say it's 18 inches. I haven't looked at it in a little bit. I'd have to break out my weird power a little uh, uh, cheat sheet that I have printed up. But it, that's a gr it's the best power psychic power there is, and he's the best at using it. Um, this guy's amazing. Five stars. Deluxe should, this should be their first purchase the second they get 190 credits. And then the second you can get that displacer field on them, put that on them as well. Five stars. Best brute in the game. All right. The Escher Chimerics. Um, I would use one of my Age of Sigmar models for this. I'm just going to have to take the rider off and, and run, figure out how to make him look better without a saddle on his back. Um, but I, I definitely think they should have Escher be able to ride on this thing. I don't understand why it isn't some sort of a mount thing. I guess there's no mount rules yet. Now, with those new... Uh, um, 
what are they called? The cavalry guys that the Adeptus Mechanicus just got. I definitely just purchased some of those and those are definitely going to become a thing. Also, if you want to look back at some of my episodes, I want to say it's episode two or three that I talked about vehicles um, and how I'm testing those out. I love the rules. I'm still working on it. Um, I've just been trying to play test the things that I'm talking about, such as brutes and hangers on and stuff like that. So, um, I haven't gotten back to them, but I will update you guys and show you the miniatures I've created using orc vehicles and those cavalry dudes for the Adeptus Mechanicus, and uh, I might make a Chimerics with the Nesher riding it. Why not? Um, that's how they that's how they control it, maybe. They have to tame it. They have to have a rider on it, so I guess that's how I would justify putting a rider on it. It doesn't have a benefit. She can't shoot or anything like that. She's got to focus on controlling it or something like that, so... My Chimerics will probably have an Escher riding it. Uh, okay, back to the back to the action. Uh, weapon skill four plus, ballistic skill four plus. That's kind of the standard for these for a lot of these brutes. So that's not bad, but I wish it was better. Um, strength four. Also, that's kind of the standard. So not bad there. Toughness five. That is good. I love good toughness. If there's ever a stat that you should buff up, it's toughness, and then maybe ballistic skill for a shooter or weapon skill for a fighter type person. Um, attacks three, not bad. Uh, that's kind of the standard, I would say, is three. So if you see less than that, that's probably not good. Um, they have a chemical cloud breath weapon. It does a blast three, six inches to 12 inches, and it gets plus one on the six inch. Um, so that makes it a three plus with the blast three. So it's not going to miss too bad. Um, and it's strength three, AP uh, minus one, damage one. So it's a frag grenade, I guess is the best way to put it. So not bad. Um, I kind of wish it had the gas deal since they, it's a chemical cloud breath weapon, but oh well. Now you can pay 80 credits for the gaseous eruption breath weapon, which is a gas template, uh, flamer template. I personally wouldn't do that because they're already 220, which is kind of 220, I would almost say is the average uh, price you're gonna see for these brutes. 80 credits is a lot to give it a template weapon. I personally would avoid that. Uh, just keep them cheap. Um, they have talons, which have melee and pulverize. Uh, it's regular strength, which but your strength is four, so not horrible. Uh, minus one to the AP because of the clawness of it. Two damage, I like that. And it has pulverize. I actually like pulverize a lot. It's one, It's a fun rule that if you roll over the toughness or equal to or over the toughness, um, it does more things. So I like that trait. And if you upgrade this with the razor sharp talons for 30 credits, you actually, it seems like you lose the pulverize and gain rending, which can increase the damage and the AP, I believe, for rending. But... I like Pulverize better in that. I wish it kind of kept Pulverize and gained Rending, personally, um, because of the sharpness of the Talons. Um, so it gave you, you know, minus one AP, or yeah, no, another minus one AP and another minus one damage. So, because from three to four damage, I, that's a lot of damage dice to roll. Three is good. Four is, I don't know if that's, I would have to see the statistics on how much better that is on a D6 to guarantee you get a kill, I guess. Um, so I don't know how much three versus four is in that. If so if there's stats guys out there, I'd love to know. Uh, please put it in the comment sections. Um, but I feel like if you're rolling three injury dice uh, because you did damage three on any of those, I mean, shoot, with three, three attacks plus one on the charge plus one for two melee weapon of talons you could you could get a lot of dice already so that i don't know if another damage is worth 30 credits um that's that's just me um it's got regeneration so you can do a simple action roll a d6 on a four plus this fighter immediately heals one lost wound they only have three wounds which is kind of the standard but what i would do is roll in do your attacks if you get hurt and lose a wound or two fall back do that a few times uh, because it's a simple action. Regen uh, back up to, to three wounds and then charge back in again. Um, it's only got move six, I guess. It, move six is good, but I feel like for this cat thing, I would almost, I wish it was like move eight. I want to say 10, but I, I feel like move eight would be better or even seven um, because it's kind of this quadruped uh, cat creature that that I feel would be faster than than a, a deluxe spiker floating around. Um, 
I don't know. It's weird that those that this thing isn't faster, but I, I feel like six is probably a good cap of speed on it because otherwise it would get it would be crazy fast. Um, so I don't know. That's probably my one like negative on that is that it could be faster uh, re if you went realistically. I'm saying that with uh, quotation marks around it. Realistically, it has crushing blow, and you need to remember to do this. So you know, put maybe I I make tokens out and put them next to the creature with their special abilities on it because this is a special rule just to remind myself, and I keep that little token next to it, and I still forget sometimes. But what you can do is when you do close combat attacks, you can nominate one of your dice, usually a, like I use the red and black ones that came from the the uh, Dark Uprising box, and so I would make the black die, the crushing blow die or whatever, and so then this die gets atta the attack strength and damage are increased by one. Again, no reason to get the razor sharp talents. You got already got it with the crush and blow attack, but you got to remember to use it. So do something if you need to. Don't but don't feel bad. Uh, don't feel like you're taken away from the other player's game or whatever by putting a token next to your guy to remind you to do stuff. It, it, I pr it gets so frustrating because I I forget things all the time. And I don't want you guys to forget this stuff. So read these rules, memorize them as best you can for the characters you're using, and uh, especially for their special rules and weapons traits and stuff like that. That that will help you remember it during the battle. And then second of all, make little tokens and put those out for these special rules so that you remember to use them because it can be the difference in winning and losing a fight sometimes. Because uh, and you don't want to do that and just look back and be like, oh man. I, I did four different, uh, you know, combats with that, that Chimerics and I forgot Crushing Blow every single time. And maybe that would have made the difference. Maybe because you're telling yourself like, well, this Chimerics isn't very good. Well, are you for remembering all the rules? Uh, stuff like that. So I want you guys to remember that. Try and, uh, try and do what you need to to make sure you remember all the rules. I'll give this thing... Three stars. It's pretty much the main average. I would almost say this one sets the bar of what a regular average brute should be um, because of its stats and cost and abilities, etc. So three stars. It's it's just about average. Next is the Glazerker. Guys, we gotta talk about the miniature for this. I I despise the Forge World version. Let's I'm gonna pull this up on the internet while I'm talking about this with you guys, because it's hideous. It's really bad. Uh, let's see, Goliath Circa. Forge World is supposed to make some of the best miniatures in the game. Um, and I get it. There's a lot of better miniature companies out there now. But I I hate this miniature. I hate it. He, why does he have an Ambot head? I mean, he could have so many, he could have such cooler stuff. His, his right hand, is like a third of the size of his left hand and i don't there's so he's just got random stuff plugged into him that's like that's like dark eldar stuff and his head he's got what does he have around his neck he's got like a hose around his neck maybe and it's his his mohawk doesn't even look good he's got maybe a bull ring in his and his nose, yeah. I can't even tell. Maybe that's just his nose looks weird. I don't I don't like this guy. They look horrible. Here's the one. I'm going to post up the one I think you should get. And this is from Artel. This is where a lot of my miniatures are coming from. Um, I got them all ordered. Um, so this guy, th this, it's proportional. He's got creepy veiny muscles. Check. He looks awesome in the face and has a cool mohawk like piece uh, check. He, you know, this this is <laughs> I don't know I I just feel like th they failed on this guy. He doesn't look good. The, you could do so much better, and the Artel Zerker is just so much better um, to me. Again, this is all my opinion. I don't like him, and and I'm sorry. I, I wish I did, because I love Forge World stuff. I just got a huge order in of Forge World stuff now that they finally opened um, with just weapons bits and stuff like that that I needed for my Escher and my Deloc, and I got a bunch of the Hive Scum and and, and Bounty Hunters, but this guy is bad, and, and Forge World's supposed to be the best. So this is disappointing. Um, 
this this could have been so much better. And, and so most of their stuff is. Forge World makes good stuff. Okay, movement four. Weapon skill three plus. That four is not great for the movement. Um, three plus is good for weapon skill. He needs to be able to punch things. He's got strength six, awesome. Toughness five, good. Uh, wounds three, that's about average. And attacks three. Again, that's good. That's about what they should have is three. Uh, if you got two or less, that's not amazing. For something that should be a hand-to-hand -hand, uh, thing. He's got open fists. Here's where it starts to go downhill. Um, it's strength, which is six, good. I'll, I'll take that. Strength six, hit, no problem. Um, AP minus one. All right, that's fine. It's a it's a fist, not something cutting into armor. I get that. Damage one. I don't understand the damage one. At least two. I mean, look. Dude, I mean, look how giant he is. Um, I don't understand the low damage. He's got knockback. Okay, that's fine. It, that makes sense. It's a punch weapon thing. Um, you can upgrade him to mutated fists and bone spurs at with for seventy credits. Um, and all that really does is give you plus one strength. Uh, a two inch range on it, so that's good. Um, but plus one strength going from strength six to seven, probably overkill for most of the things you're gonna want to attack. Again, I guess you might want to use him to go after other brutes, but at the same time, I would really probably use him to attack like Jews and gangers and just let him gobble those guys up and, and just rack up. You, you want to go against something that's not as good as you, not an equal matchup. Um, Minus two AP, two damage. So to get two damage on every hit, you gotta pay 70 credits, no thanks. Um, furnace plate armor, yes, I'd put that on him. That's good, 10 credits, cheap, good armor for that, um, just to make him more survivable. And a stem slug stash. Again, I don't like that it's one use, but at least it's 20 credits, so it's nice and cheap because uh, the Goliath guys get that nice and cheap. And you need that more for the two-inch move than anything. It's not like you need it for the strength and stuff like that, but two-inch move, uh, two, bonus to your four-inch uh, attack is what you want. Um, and then he's got the special rules of... Uh, combat drugs, which allows him to get plus D3 attacks, but if he rolls a 1 on that D3 roll, then he suffers a bad reaction, is reduced, uh, his attack characteristic is reduced to 1 for the round, so it's pretty much really D2 attacks, because um, if you roll the 1, you're going to be hurting. So, uh, that's, that's a tough one that brings him down. And then Impetuous, when the fighter consolidates, he gets 4 inches in that too. That's decent. Again, uh, he's 210 credits, but for just pretty much having empty fists i don't love that and so he's less than average because of that he's average cost less than average abilities two stars sorry guys two stars for this and i know i'm probably being influenced by the miniature but i like i said i'm getting the artel version i'm going to paint him up i don't play goliath a lot but i plan on it because i want to do a review of the house of chains and uh, I'm going to use the him a lot once that happens, but it will be the Artel one. It will not be that ugly ass uh, Forge World one. Okay, on to the Iron Automata. Uh, weapon skill 4, Ballistic skill 4, that's all basic. Move 5, that's basic. Um, stand, uh, standard. Strength 5, Toughness 5. Both of those are good. Uh, 3 wounds, 2 attacks. That's where you start to run into problems is the 2 attacks, but he does have a Power Claw which is strength five because it's it's just strength minus one ap two damage uh and has pulverize also so i love pulverize way better than knockback for me um i know you can use knockback for things i hear you guys i see it in the comment section you can use it to knock people off uh you know bridges and stuff there there is a use for it but getting a brute up on some of those uh you know things might be might be troublesome um for 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 getting him up there but at the same time, I, I, I see the reason for knockback. There are no a reason for knockback. I'm, I, I don't want to knock the knockback, uh, especially you guys who like it a lot. The, it has its uses, but it's better as a shooting weapon that knocks back. So you don't have to get up in their face and do it. Um, because if you're up on that bridge, you're just as likely to get knocked back by something and knocked off as well. And your brood's falling six stories to his doom. So... Uh, he's got the really glitchy rule, so he, he rolls a d6 every time he activates, and on a 1, he goes insane. 
Um, it, that's kind of a Blood Bowl thing. It's almost like the really stupid rule where, same thing, if you roll a one, they just have to stand there for a, a turn and, and veg out. Um, so this is kind of where that's going with that in just a weird Necromunda way. I don't love Insane because it's, it's punishing, um, but... I guess it has its uses and it could go in your favor if they go go berserk at something that um, is an enemy. So Man of Iron rule uh, gives him a three plus save, Nerves of Steel and Fearsome Skill. Awesome. He's got great skills. He's got a three plus save. He's got a power claw and an assault cannon. That's the weapons are really what makes this guy for me. I would probably have ranked him lower, but give me an assault cannon, 12 inch to 24 inch long range, plus one at 12 inches, strength five, uh, awesome. Rapid fire two, minus one AP, does one damage, but I, I'll take one damage when I got rapid fire two. Uh, ammo six plus, that's probably where you run into the problems there. Um, Automated repairs. Let's go back to his, uh, his special rules. Automated repairs, and he can self repair. And this is on a D6. During the recovery phase, he can recover a wound. That's not horrible. Um, I'll take that. It's on a six, so if you get it, cool. Not a big, not a big deal. Also, when he's down, seriously injured, he gets to roll a second injury dice. That's really good to make sure he gets back up on his feet. And then maybe after that, he can try and get lucky with that automated repairs and re heal. Uh, the issues that you're having, um, get some wounds back so he's not going to take injury dice every single time he gets hit after that. So decent, uh, I'm torn. I would say between three and four stars. He's 220 credits, which like we talked about is kind of the standard. So I'm probably leaning towards three stars, but I could see how it's four stars for, for some of this stuff. Um, I do like the assault cannon. That thing's cool. I, I, I have, I'm biased for rapid fire. Nah, four stars. Why not? We'll give him four stars. He may not be that great, but try him out. I guess that here's the thing. It seems like the iron automata is somebody that everyone can take. And because of that, that probably makes it four stars. A lot of these, a lot of these brutes are only one gang can take them. So they're only good for that one gang, but this guy can, I'm pretty sure can go with everybody. So might as well take them, uh, four stars. The Jotun H-Grade Servitor Ogren, I'm going to go over him quick here, but I'm also going to cover him in the Goliath uh, House of Chains book. I'm going to do a full review of Goliath. We'll go over that whole book. That's how we're going to handle all of the Escher, you know, everybody that's getting the new books, pretty much the starting six, are all, looks like, going to get their own full uh, codexes, if you want to say that, uh, for 40k reasons. Um and, and I want to review those guys. Every time their codex comes out, I do, I'll do a full review, play with them for a month, and then give you guys my thoughts on it. So um, we'll go over it quick here. Movement five, good. Weapon skill four, average. Um, he doesn't have great ballistic skill, but I don't think he even, no, nope, doesn't even have a, a, a ballistic weapon. Strength five, toughness five, good and good. Uh, average three wounds, only two attacks. That's probably the, the bad thing in this one is the two attacks. He's got augmented, augmentic fists, augmentic, augmentic fists, if I can say that word. Um, this is what the Zerker should have. It's strength plus one instead of just strength, AP minus one, just like that, and damage two. It's got melee and knockback, look at that. So this is what the Goliath Zerker should have, and I don't know why they're different. Um, it can upgrade to the, the the Arc Welder, and then you can get a bunch of more weapons uh, in the House of Chains stuff. They're, they have, like, they can get the Spud Jack and some other things in there. I don't know the, the points cost, because I don't have that book open right now, but, I wouldn't pay 70 credits for the upgraded weapon. It can set them on fire because it has the blaze trait, but it's strength plus two. At that point, you're at strength seven anyways. Again, I, I strength seven could be really be overkill if you're going against stuff that's um, toughness three. So um, let's see. AP minus three for that. Damage three. So it's really damaging. Um, so, I, But for 70 credits, just keep this guy cheap. Keep him at 210. Um, 15 credits for furnace armor. Yes, that's a six plus, five plus in the front. Might as well put some armor on him just to give him a little bit of survivability. Um, and hopefully maybe roll a five or a six. Um, 
I like that armor is not a big thing in this. You don't want a bunch of space marines running around. No one would ever die. So uh, he's got the headbutt rule, which is a basic attack. Uh, I feel this is because you you would allow it allows you to fight and then also headbutt because um, it's two different actions, both basic. Uh, gives you strength two and can do damage two if you roll over. How does this work? If you roll equal to or higher than their toughness on 2d6. So on an average roll of seven for 2d6, you should be able to roll over their toughness on most things, uh, even even on uh, uh, most brutes. So he's loyal. Um, whenever this fighter is assisting a friendly fighter in melee, the fighter adds plus two to the result. How I personally would use this is if you look at the amount of uh, Jotun Servitor Ogrins you can have, it's two. So the best thing that's better than one Servitor Ogrin is two Servitor Ogrins. So run these guys in. First guy ro rolls up. He's got three wounds, a six plus or five plus armor save and in close combat, probably a five. Um, and he takes some damage. He only hits on a four plus with his weapon skill, but the next Ogrin that rolls in and assaults because they're sticking together because they're twin, twin brother Ogrins, he now hits on a two plus because he's getting the assist, adding two to his weapon skill. So not, now his uh, two attacks plus one for charging, plus one for having two melee weapons being those augmented fists. Now he's rolling four dice on two pluses. That's how I'd use them. That's my combo for them. Keep two Ogrins together and let them roll together as twin brother Ogrins and just take people out with with a double charge on each one. Now here's the problem is they're slow witted, so you can never activate them as part of a group activation. And I, maybe that's because they saw this happening. Um, so you're gonna have to do two different activations, but I feel that this Ogren with his high toughness of five can, can weather the storm and stick around in close combat so that his brother could roll in and uh, with that second charge and have the benefits. Okay, the Luther Pattern Ambot. 215 credits, move four. That's probably part of the problem with them there. Uh, weapon skill three, that's good. They have a ballistic skill five, and I, I, we played with these guys a few times, and I they literally never hit with their Melta uh, in any of the shots of any of the games that I had because of that ballistic skill five. And the Melta weapon doesn't get a short or a long bonus uh, on its stat line there. So that... that if it, if it could bump it down at short range to four plus, that would be better, but it does not um, for, for that tunneling claw melta. And it has strength five, toughness five. So the toughness five made it very hard to wound. I had to pile in three Kador, one of which was the, the, the huntsman or the head the headhunter, whatever their, their character guy is from Forge World. I just got him and uh, I rolled in. It took him plus two other regular Kador gangers to A, make sure this guy didn't hit us and B, to make sure that I could uh, just bring my heavy ax down on his brain pan and do enough wounds over time. It took three three rounds fighting him with three guys to uh, to finally take him out. So he soaked up three different gangers, one of which was a major character, um, probably better than a leader really, and 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 lock them down for multiple turns of the game um, because I was trying to, I wanted to see if I could kill it. And I finally did, but it it was not worth the resources I expended to put into it. It would have been better, better just to pin lock it, stay away from it, and let it chase me around the board um, like that. So, um, other things, special rules has infiltrate. I would not get the grab fist for 70 credits. Again, try and keep these guys, like if you just have credits to spend, go ahead and do it. It's better. It's got a bunch of cool, uh, you know, add on rules like pulverize and stuff like that. But I, I wouldn't spend the extra 70 credits unless you just needed to throw away credits. Um, Infiltrate really gets it close and it's in your face, usually on the second or turn, almost always um, because of that. And even on a four by four board, um, the cranial governors gives it, it gives it 
plus one attack on the charge because of the berserk and then also a d3 plus one so i i personally maybe would have just done d3 plus two and just guaranteed that extra one but i i guess you you, you wouldn't get it on the charge um or I guess once you're in charge, you only get the Berserk on the charge. So it's a way to kind of not give it too many uh, attacks um, on that. But it's just kind of weird that they gave it an extra attack with Berserk, but then also gave it D3 plus one attacks. Why not just lump that together? I don't know. That's that's just me. Um, it has the mechanical construct of a four plus armor save. And that, that was really the problem is I think I had AP two. So it, it knocked it down to a six plus with my big old ax of the, the, the headsman. But that four plus kept him in the game for a long time. Um, and so that's really good. That light carapace armor, great. Um, excavation, oh, in a campaign, it's going to help you out if you have a mine working territory. So that's good that it's, it gives you a campaign benefit as well. Awesome. Because of those things, 215, so it's five credits less than what the average is. It's got an infiltrate rule that's going to get into combat and in their faces so that they probably need to at least assign a ganger or two to trying to pin lock it all the time. Um, probably worth it. Probably worth it because of the 215. I'll give it four stars. I like the infiltrate. If it didn't have infiltrate, it would definitely be three or less. Um, but the infiltrate makes it pretty dang good. And it, and if you really need to kill it, then you're really gonna have to, uh, you know, pile in a bunch of dudes and hopefully have some minus AP stuff um, or hopefully some minus AP shooting things to make it go away. Orlock Lugger Cargo Servitor. 230 credits, so it's 10 more than the usual. Uh, only four move. Um, what else we got? Weapon skill five. It says it has a servitor combat weapon, but it, in the weapons, it doesn't say anything about that thing, but it also doesn't let you buy it. So I have a feeling it does have it anyways. Um, so it seems to have a harpoon launcher and the combat weapon. Um, the harpoon launcher is good. It's strength five. Uh, the... Servidor itself has strength five and toughness five, so good and good. Only two attacks. I th I think this is more of a shooting uh, brute, really. Uh, and here's why: for its options, you can get a heavy bolter for fifty credits. That's good, but I would probably go with the heavy stubber for twenty credits personally. Um, it has rapid fire two, and it has strength four. Um, so it's 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 a better credit option to me. Um, to purchase it there. So two, 20 credits, that makes it 250. And then also might as well get that mono site for another 25. So that makes it 275. So this one can get expensive, but it's a weapons platform, which means you can use it as a, uh, it can do a basic action rather than a double action. And it doesn't get a minus one for doing that. Like the, the, the gun stig, but um, that's what I would use it as roll this thing around, blast away with your heavy stubber. It has the light carapace armor with so four plus, good, really good. And it has the ammo hoppers. So it can reroll a failed ammo check, that's a natural one. Um, so it's only gonna fail for that on a two or a three for the heavy stubber. So that's another thing to keep on in, into account is the ammo for the heavy stubber is better than the heavy bolter, which is a six. So you do not wanna run out of ammo with this thing. Um, it's better to just use that rapid fire two and keep the heavy stubber uh, at 20 to 40 inches. Great. So good weapon. Um, 275 is a little pricey, but I think it's worth it. The, the mono sight, if you use an aim action, it gives you plus two instead of plus one. That's what the mono sight does. I like that. Get it into an awesome area overlooking it, you know, a, a, a threat area or a dead zone that you could make as a kill zone. Um, maybe covering a, an objective so it's bait so that uh, if the enemy really wants to run out and grab that ammo box and then you're gonna light them up with that with that uh, cargo servitor so that's how I'd use them due to the cost I'm gonna say three stars 275 is a lot um, but again if you got the credits it's definitely gonna be worth it um, so three stars on them for the Orlock Lugger cargo servitor Last one of the night, we got the Vansar Arachnarig Servo Suit, 240 credits. A little more, 
but I think you get a little more for that 240. Let's go over it. Move five, good. Uh, strength five. It's weapon skill, both skills four plus. That's kind of standard. Strength five, good. Uh, toughness four, that's average. Um, wounds three, again, average. Attacks four. Now, this is because of all those, those arms on it, but four attacks is awesome. So think of it in a charge. Four attacks, plus one for the charge, plus one for a bunch of arms punching you in the face uh, because of it's all it's spider arms. Uh, that's awesome. Six attacks on the charge. It's got the twin-linked heavy lass carbine. This thing's 15 inches, plus one on the 15 for the short range. 30 inches long range. That's really good. So it's bet you know this is an uh, this is a buffed up twin-linked las gun. Strength four. What I think every what I wish every las gun had, but I get it. It's the las gun. Um, and damage one. Okay, that's fine. Here's why damage one is fine because of plentiful and rapid fire three. Hell yeah, rapid fire three is great. You can get all kinds of hits with that. Um, and also you, you're probably that the rapid fire three means you're probably going to roll ammo checks a lot more, but it's got plentiful and it's got ammo four. So even with plentiful, if you fail it the next turn, you just reload it right back using the action automatically reload it. You're good to go, um, back in action. And, and because of that, now this thing can get a plasma gun for 60 credits, which because of 60 credits versus the regular hundred that a plasma gun costs. I would eventually upgrade it to the plasma gun and give it, give it an extra plasma gun, taking away one of your arms. But you don't have to do that right out of the gate. The twin linked heavy las carbine is, is good. Um, probably the only reason to get the plasma gun is just to, to take out other brutes or other high toughness, high armor, things like that um, with its shooting. So you don't have to get that at first. It, it, just for 240 credits, you can go ahead and just use that twin linked heavy last carbine. And it's a good gun pl platform because of that. It, that weapon is not a heavy weapon. It's just a twin linked weapon. And oh yeah, by the way, twin linked carbines are in the special rules. That's a hint of what, what's the best thing to have on this thing. When a fighter makes a range attack, they reroll any number of ammo dice rolled. So, hey, you just rolled a bunch of ammo checks. Pick those up and reroll them. If you get... If, pretty much if you got one hit or an ammo check, which is also one hit, go ahead and pick those up and re-roll them. If you got two or, uh, or three, leave those there um, and, and go ahead and re-roll the ones or the ones with the ammo check. It's got mechanical construction, so, uh, construction, so it has light carapace armor, four plus, good. Um, that's, that's exactly what you want on it. It's got the Vansar protective gear. I personally wouldn't use the Radphage gun. I'd just stick with either plasma gun or just the basic gun it comes with. Um, and the superior weapons array. This fighter can make two shoot simple actions per turn. Awesome. So you can shoot double shots with your twin linked, double twin linked shots per turn. Awesome. Done. Um, this guy's great, especially for 240 credits. That's a little more than average, but for what you're getting, this guy's great. Uh, every Vansar should pick one of these up as soon as possible. Five stars. All right, guys, that's what I got for tonight. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Static out. <laughs>